This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews, partner. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around, it's the Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa, brought to us by Greengrass Productions and King World. Hi, partners. I'm Duel, the Big D to you. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So this week's Saturday morning TV log is the Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa. It's a a western, weird west themed anime series based on on a little something created by comic book artist Ryan Brown, known for his work on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The show originally premiered in September of 1992 on ABC. Greengrass Productions was the actual producer, along with King World, who of course were distributing our, well, favorite popular game shows, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune at the time. Gunther, Gunther Walt Productions animated the first season, while Ruby Spears animated its second season. At the time of its launch, it was only the second animated series involving King World to be broadcast. The era was Hanna-Barbera's Little Rascals tune, which also aired on ABC back in 1982, which I have yet to do that, but I will be doing that eventually. Just stay tuned. So, the show dealt with a mutation of some kind, and a radiated comet struck the late 19th century western plains creating a miles high mesa shrouded in clouds. Everything trapped on top of the mesa was calmatized by the light up from the calmet and evolved into a bovipomorphic state. Inspired by old tales of the Wild West, this new bovine community developed to the point where the emulated where they emulate that era's way of life, including the requisite ruffians and corrupt sheriffs. However, their knowledge of Wild West living was limited, and as such, many things about their capture had to be improvised to fill in the blanks. The concepts of steampunk and Weird West were utilized throughout its run. The series focuses on trying to keep justice in the frontier territory. The lawbreakers were too much for the corrupt regulars of Cowtown, namely Mayor Oscar Bull Bologna and Sheriff Terror Bull to handle themselves. Helping them out where they went or not were a group of peacekeepers known as the Cowboys, C-O-W, which that was part that part was short for Code of the West. Led by Marshall Moon Montana, joined by his two colleagues, the Dakota Dude and the Colorado Kid. Marshall Montana and his deputies had their hands full with several ruffians and outlaw gangs that plagued the otherwise peaceful town. Now, yes, I grew up watching this show, and I still have some memories watching it, but I haven't watched this show in ages. After a total of 26 episodes were produced and aired for its two-season run, the show came to an end in December of 1993, but it continued to rerun until 94. It also got aired in Canada the same year it premiered here in America on YTV and continued to be rerun in 1999. After About four years after it, it got cancelled in the US, it returned to us on the Toon Disney Network from in 1998 and ran until 2001. Now then, I'll also give you, I'm, I'm also going to give you the voice actors for this, along with their um, characters. Now, voicing the Cowboys, Marshall Moon Montana is voiced by Pat Fraley, who of course was voicing Krang at the time on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, this isn't the first time he voiced a, a heroic um, Western guy. He also, or a character, what have you, he had recently voiced Brave Star five years before this. Now, he's the leader of the Cowboys. He's courageous and quick on his hooves. He bounces the bad guys and makes the West a safer place to graze. He lives by the code of the West, which he seems to make up as he goes along. He has a gun that shoots star badges, 
and rides a horse named Cyclone. Voicing the Dakota dude is Jim Cummings, who of course was voicing Winnie the Pooh and, and Tigger. And of course he had also recently done voice work in other Disney tunes. Now he's the soft-spoken muscle of Montana's group. He's calm and level-headed as he rarely use, loses his temper even in near-death experiences and scared of heights. And he rides a horse named Rebel. Voicing the Colorado Kid is Jeff Bennett, who has done numerous voice acting work. I know he would later on go on to do the voice of another cowboy type character, and that was Clay, the, the, the big Texas dude who wears a cowboy hat on Shaolin Showdown. Now, he's a Holstein cowboy who is the youngest in the group and self proclaimed ladies man with a good singing voice, regardless of his skill with the lasso and guitar. Also, he is a deputy yet. And he has a horse named Jezebel. Now, here's some other characters. There's Lily Bovine, or Miss Lily, voiced by Charity James, a bartender, former showgirl, and the owner of the local saloon called the Tumbleweed, where the cowboys go to enjoy some sarsaparilla. She's also Marshall Moo Montana's love interest. Then there's her best friend, Calamity Kate, who is voiced by Kay Lenz, who I believe I've seen this one before. Now she's been in some movies and what have you, including um, American Graffiti and Death Wish 4, and plus several others. And she's also appeared on numerous shows. Ah, yes. I, I thought so. I remembered seeing this gal on in an episode of Mr. Belvedere, on it, which aired on ABC years before. Now, Calamity K is a tomboyish rancher and operator of the highly profitable Golden Cud Mine. She's as hard-working and hard riding as any bull, and has enough skill with a lasso to put Cal Rao Kid to shame. And she returns to Koa Dude's romantic feelings, where she once gave him uh, the hat he wears and nearly married him in one episode. Yep. Now, of course, her, her um, name is a play on Calamity Jane. Next up, there's Cody Cav, the youngest, the young character, voiced by Troy Davidson in his kid form. We, and we see him as an adult in one episode, voiced by Rob Paulson. Now, of course, Moog nicknames him Calf Pint. It was the same with the posse. You know? Cody idolizes the marshal and hopes to become a law cow himself when he grows up. He is apparently related to Lily in some way and lives with her, though he does not appear to be her son in, in ways. And he's the one he refers to her refers to her as Miss Lily. Although well me, he often gets himself into serious trouble trying to help the law cows, but has been a useful asset on several occasions. Let's see. There's lots of other characters, including Puma, voiced by Bill Farmer, who I believe, who of course was well known, who was already well known for voicing Goofy at the time. He's he's um the shoe shiner in the town. Jr. voiced by Michael Horse, an Indian bison, who occasionally aids the cowboys if the situation needs it. And what have you? Uh, he tends to ramble about the scientific principles of his intentions, which the the guy, well, the cowboys don't want to listen to, and will be asked to show them how it works. There's and here's another Indian bison, Tewa, uh, voiced by Charity James, and she's Jr.'s niece, and it's Cody's best friend. Buffalo Bull is another character, voiced by Jeff Bennett. He works as Cowtown's blacksmith, 
Also, he would be a member of the Cowboys in a video game, but I'll get to that later. Jack, voiced by Jim Cummings, is the telegraph operator. He's a rabbit. And Gordon Borden, also voiced by Jim Cummings, is the prison warden. Now, the, now our central antagonists are Mayor Oscar Bologna, voiced by Michael Greer, the greedy and corrupt mayor of Cowtown. Yeah. A real corrupt mayor, just like what we see on other things, you know. He rigs elections in one episode, makes taxes so high that even the mysterious mass bull, who I'll get to in a moment, compares it to stealing. He also serves as the crooked justice of the peace and bank president. Next up is Sheriff Terrible. Yeah, Terrible. Voiced by Joe Piscopo. Selected by Mayor Bologna. He uses his sheriff's badge to conceal his evil intentions. When committing crimes, he disguises himself as a masked bull, which unknown to our heroes in the actual series, but they find out in the video game where he sports a different posture. He was forced to leave Cowtown after losing a bet to Moo in one episode to see who can catch the character Shock Holiday and become sheriff of the remote town of Lonesome Gulch as Bologna tells him to put up with it until he can think of a way to get him back to, into Cowtown. He's got now, of course, Terror Bull or Mass Bull has two Goons, Sal Source Scorpion, voiced by Jim Cummings, and Boot Hill Buzzard, voiced by Danny Mann. There's lots of other characters I'll mention, including Barney Finkelberg, who was voiced by Tim Curry. Yes, you heard me correctly. And there's tons of others and what have you. Actually, there's too many and what have you. Uh, well, ranging from characters like Shock Holiday, voiced by Michael Bell, who had recently voiced um, Quacker Jack and a few other characters in Disney's Darkwing Duck. He also lent his voice to G.I. Joe and Super Friends. And Cow Bell, voiced by Ruth Buzzy. Most people knew her best from Rowan Martin's Laugh-In fame and lots of other things. And there was even a character, Longhorn Silver, who was voiced by Brad Garrett, who, this was long before... He worked on TV's Everybody Loves Raymond. And, of course, he'd go on to voice the big dog in Anna Barbera's Two Stupid Dogs. They didn't some other voice acting for this. So, anyway, and there's lots of, and there's a host of others. Anyway, now... Now, of course, there was the theme song to it, which was done by country singer Billy Dean, who, of course, was in ways actually kind of big at the time. And he co-wrote the song with Verlin Thompson. Other things that were tie-ins with the show include um, a toy line from Hasbro with designs that were reminiscent to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action figures from Playmate. There was also a three-issue limited series from Archie Comics that came out in December of that year in 92. And then there was a regular series which also had three issues starting in March of the following year. show has been released on video cassette in 12 set, 12, 12 video cassettes. And now, of course, there was also released in North America and Europe in November of 92, an arcade game released by Konami. Uh, it was a Ryan Gun game, but except it did have a health bar for characters. But the game was Ryan Gun similar to that of the, the company's previous western themed game, Sunset Riders, which came out the previous year. So anyway, I think the Wild West Cowboys of Mumesa, I think it's a little underrated and what have you, but I feel like this is just so awesome. I really like this show, and it does have great characters and all that jazz. 
I think you really like it if you give it a shot and what have you. Let me go ahead and get see if I can get a shot of them, most of the group. Okay, here's some actual art of the whole group and what have you. I'm sure you'll know who they are once you give this show a watch and what have you. Yep. While the show isn't available on DVD, unfortunately, but however, there is a way you can watch the show. You can find the full series available on YouTube. Now, some YouTubers actually do have all 26 episodes, so if you if you haven't seen The Wild West Cowboys and Moon Mesa yet, then I would highly recommend you check this out. If you like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or some of those an other anthropomorphic animal type shows, or maybe even Brave Star, then I'd say you'll you'll love the Wild West Cowboys and Moon Mesa. It's a real good show. So that's gonna do it. What did you think? Did you ever watch the Wild West Cowboys and Moon Mesa? Please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation partners. And hopefully tonight you'll get my spoiler-free review of Transformers: Rise of the Beast next. At least I hope. So, I do hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, check out these other Saturday morning TV logs. In the upper left-hand corner is the Saturday morning TV log I did on the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The upper right-hand corner is my, well, one of my earlier Saturday morning TV logs on another group of anthropomorphic animal characters, that being Street Sharks. Or if you'd like something else, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my TV log of Brave Star, which of course aired five days a week. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the Saturday morning TV log, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and next week's Saturday morning TV log is... The Amazing Chan and the Chan Clan. So until next time, partners, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.